Hello, uh, welcome back, everyone. I'm Lei Wang from the Institute of Physics, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Um, I'm going to chair the afternoon session. So the first talk is going to be given by uh, Dr. Kong Jing Li from Arizona State University. So please. Yep, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. I am uh, Kong Jing Li from Arizona State University. So uh, I'd like to first thank the organizers for hosting this great conference. And um, I'd like to also thank the reviewers who suggested a great feedbacks. So um, this is a collaborative work with my uh, great collaborators, uh, Nat Trask from Sandia National Lab and uh, Panos Tinis, uh, who's from Pacific Northwest National Lab. So uh, this is the work uh, that we have started uh, while I was in Sandia as a postdoc. And uh, we have finished this uh, after I started my new position at Arizona State University. So um, this study is about sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics uh, for structure preserving uh, data driven modeling. So here we are presenting. Um, a method to identify nonlinear dynamics in a way that the structure of dynamics dynamics is preserved, while uh, the dynamics is represented in a sparse set of dictionaries. So we are assuming that uh, there exists some set of measurements on the state variables, and from those measurements, we are trying to identify the uh, some parsimonious expression of the governing equation. So here's an overview of this talk. So um, we first present an idea of uh, synthesizing dictionary-based sparse identification method with uh, neural ODEs, and we named this computational framework as neural SYND. So uh, as I noted here, um, I would like to make sure that um, this is not the first work. We are, we are not claiming that this is the first work that um, do the synthesizing of um, dictionary-based sparse identification with neural ODEs. Uh, in the revisioning process, uh, one of the reviewers suggested that we have take a look at this paper. And we also found another paper which tries to uh, combine the neural ODEs with the uh, sparse identification method. Yeah. So um, their approach is more of in the probabilistic settings. They try to use some probabilistic tools to um, identify the coefficients. Our method is more of uh, direct applications of CD in the neural ODE settings. Um, after introducing the neural CD, uh, then we present some parameterization techniques to preserve certain structures uh, in the proposed framework. Uh, the example parameterization, te parameterization techniques would be the ones that preserve uh, the generic structure, um, port Hamiltonian or the Hamiltonian structures. So uh, with these proposed ideas, uh, we will present some results uh, that is coming from the numerical experiments, um, which we did on uh, various benchmark problems, ranging from uh, simple reversible dynamical systems to irreversible or uh, chaotic systems. So uh, here I begin by introducing the proposed computational framework, uh, which we, again, uh, name it as NeuroCD. So um, NeuroCD is based on, it, it is heavily based on uh, the computational formalism that neural, OD, neural ordinary differential equations provide. So by now, the neural ODEs are a very well known. So uh, I'll, I'll briefly recap what neural ODEs are and how they can be used in data-driven dynamics modeling. So uh, nodes, or the neural ODEs, are a family of deep neural networks. Um, 
that parameterize the time continuous dynamics as a system of ODEs. Um, if it is, if, if here the variable T is interpreted as a, a depth of neural networks, then uh, here X of T can be interpreted as a hidden layer at depth T. And the system of ODEs uh, describe how the hidden layer changes uh, over depth. And by solving this uh, initial value problem, we can compute the states of hidden layer at any depth. And that's why the neural ODEs are considered as a depth continuous neural networks and uh, ResNets are a specific realizations of neural ODEs when uh, explicit Euler scheme is used to solve these initial value problems. So uh, originally neural ODEs ODEs, uh, it naturally has a good fit for uh, data-driven dynamics modeling. And uh, this is why we choose neural ODEs and uh, in other many applications from computational physics, uh, the neural ODEs are uh, being used um, in many places. So uh, there can be many different ways for parameterizing the right-hand side of the neural ODEs here, F data. Uh, one can make it as a multi-layer perceptron MLP or convolutional neural networks if the, uh, the domain of application is in image uh, and so on. So, um, but here in this work, as we seek a sparse identification of uh, nonlinear dynamical systems, we choose a dictionary-based parameterization uh, as shown in here. So here, phi of x is a vector consisting of dictionaries. And here, capital C is the coefficient matrix. Uh, so these, ma this matrix uh, contains all the coefficients uh, for uh, these libraries. Um, and this velocity f of theta is represented as a linear combination of uh, those dictionaries. So uh, once we um, decide what dictionaries should go in into uh, this library vector, then uh, we can initialize the values of coefficient c, and uh, we can just train. Uh, tr try to fit our model to the measurements that we have. In order to do so, uh, we can take a uh, forward pass by uh, solving an initial value problem uh, and obtain the approximate quantities, uh, which is denoted by uh, x tilde. Uh, then again, since we are seeking a sparse identification, um, along with the uh, this data matching loss, um, we can add this L1 penalty of the coefficient matrix uh, so that we can uh, suppress uh, the smaller coefficients. And uh, when, when the training gets to the end, then uh, some unimportant coefficients can be um, a very small value. So uh, in addition to this uh, sparsity promoting loss, uh, we added a magnitude-based pruning approach so that the uh, coefficients that are smaller than certain threshold tau uh, can be pruned. And we found that having this magnitude-based pruning approach is very important. So uh, we will also present uh, the results without pruning and with pruning. Um, so considering the sparse, sparsity promoting loss and the magnitude-based pruning, um, here we are presenting an algorithm which uses a uh, stochastic gradient descent type algorithm 
to minimize the loss objective. So um, starting by initializing the data, and then we take some iterations. Uh, and each iteration, uh, we pick uh, this number of trajectories randomly from the training data set. And here we are using uh, mini batching. So we subsample a, a number of short sequences from the long training trajectories by sampling a uh, random initial points. So if, if we have a very long trajectories uh, in our training data set, then we just take out the subsequences out of those long sequence. Uh, and then uh, um, by, by taking some random initial points out of the trajectories. So um, this L batch would decide how short those sub subsequence would be. Uh, with those collected subsample data set, uh, we'll solve the initial value problem with specific um, board stepping in. And then we can compute the loss and then update the uh, model parameter using the SGD. And after that, uh, we measure the uh, magnitude of the uh, model coefficients. And if there is need, then we will we prune uh, those small coefficients. So um, before we move on to the structure preser preserving part, uh, I'd like to show some uh, result uh, that I obtained uh, by applying this algorithm to uh, multi multiple benchmark problems. So um, we apply the algorithm to uh, perform system ident identification on uh, these six benchmark problems first. And then um, here, what's on the second column shows the ground truth equations. And then um, the third column shows the identified equations. Um, and uh, we can see that the um, at least fourth or third significant, um, I think there's an error in the fourth or third significant digits. And for the simpler problems, uh, we can get even better uh, accuracies in identifying the coefficients. So um, this is an example of a library vector that we have used. So uh, these are the dictionaries in the library. And um, this is the case where we consider um, the systems with three variables. And if there is a only two variables, then uh, we simply take out uh, those X three variables in the dictionaries. And if there are more variables, then we again, simply add more variables into dictionaries, but uh, we keep the uh, number of total degrees do not go over a certain number. So in this example, uh, there are three variables and the maximal degree of each um, polynomials are set to two. Um, the next result is the case where we uh, turned off the pruning and trained the neural CD only by minimizing the uh, sparsity promoting loss and the data matching loss. So again, these are the same problems with the same setup, same dictionary, uh, same training algorithm, same hyperparameters and so on. So um, as you can see here, uh, without pruning, um, although we were able to find that um, those significant coefficients are um, well identified with reasonable accuracy, but since they do have some uh, coefficients that still has um, non-trivial, non-trivially large coefficients uh, in the uh, resulting model. So uh, without pruning, we were not able to uh, make all these coefficients to be zero. So 
uh, compared to these models, uh, we can see there are a lot more uh, errors uh, in identifying the systems uh, of interest. Uh, and the next comparison that we made is uh, we'd like to see how uh, accurate the predictions would be when we use the dictionary-based uh, parameterization. So here, um, uh, as opposed to the previous uh, parameterization techniques, uh, we use a multi-layer perceptron to parameterize F data. So uh, F data is an MLP uh, that has four layers in it, and each of layer has uh, 100 neurons. And what this figure shows is the uh, time instantaneous errors. So uh, it's the error um, of the predictive quantity at each time indexes. And um, again, we have used the same training algorithm, but in order to train those MLPs, uh, we turned off the um, sparsity promoting penalty, and we also turned off uh, the pruning algorithm. But uh, we used the same hyperparameters um, for um, taking uh, mini batchings and also um, for the S hyperparameters for the SGD. And uh, we can see with the same setting, um, there could be multiple uh, magnitude of difference in terms of prediction accuracies. Um, next, we did some experiments um, in scenarios where the proposed neural CMD uh, is expected to have some more strength than vanilla CMD. So CMD is the algorithm um, that is basically proposed back in 2016 by Professor um, Brunton and Professor Kutz. So um, which what it essentially does is to um, match uh, the both sides of these equations by finding um, good coefficients, see? So uh, in order to make the comparisons, we take a look at the, the most simple um, dynamical system that we have looked at. Um, and we have used the same dictionaries for um, CND and also the proposed neural CND. And um, in order to generate the training data, uh, we use a um, parameterized QB oscillator. So we generated the uh, number of uh, training trajectories by varying that parameter. Uh, here's the uh, setup that we have used. So the, in order to tr generate the uh, trajectories, we use the step size 0.01, and the total simulation time is uh, 51.2 seconds. And um, here we assume that uh, only the state measurements are available, and the derivatives, the analytic derivatives, are not available. So the derivative should be uh, computed numerically to do the neural CMD. And again, uh, I'd like to make a note that uh, the CMD that we have used to this uh, comparison is the, the vanilla one that is proposed in 2016. And uh, I believe we have used, so we, we have used the software developed by the uh, same group. Uh, which is published in 2021. And um, I think the setting that we have used is the most basic one. So we haven't done any uh, sophisticated algorithm uh, that have been developed after uh, this CND. So uh, the first scenario uh, where uh, the proposed CND could do better is the measurements are taken in uh, larger time steps. So again, um, to generate the training data um, from already uh, generated uh, original training data with this step size, um, we sample the measurements from those original trajectory. Um, 
on the coarse temporal grid with the uh, larger time steps. So here in each row, we specify the time steps. So um, if delta t is cho chosen to be 0.1, then uh, from the generated training trajectory, we only take out um, measurements at um, these time steps. So um, it is same as just removing uh, those intermediate measurements from the original training uh, trajectories. So as we make this um, uh, time step larger, uh, we can see that uh, uh, the neural CD is still um, identifying the system in a robust way. But as uh, the time steps get larger uh, in CD, um, the derivative has to be computed numerically. Uh, so uh, it adds more noise to the regression problem. So we can see that um, Cindy is having a hard time getting uh, the accurate identification. The second scenario is uh, the case where the measurements are taken on irregular time interval, uh, which makes the problem a bit more challenging again to Cindy. Um, so in order to do so, uh, from, again, the original trajectory where we collected from here, uh, we just randomly keep 90% of the measurements in each training trajectory, or 10% of the measurements in each training trajectory, or 2% in the trajectory. So um, um, the subsampled trajectory uh, would look like this as we uh, lower the um, the percentage that we are keeping. And again, neural CD, uh, what it does is the, uh, the data matching um, and where the data is produced by solving the ODEs. Um, so it could do uh, the regression in a robust way. But again, CINDY has to um, compute the numerical derivative first. So uh, it's again, having a hard time um, doing the uh, accurate identification. Um, the third scenario is the case when the additive noise is added to the measurement. So this is again a particular scenario where only an additive noise is added to the measurements. So we are not uh, considering uh, the stochasticity that might be included in the state transition in the dynamical system. But again, uh, this is a particular scenario where we assume that uh, there is a, some additive um, noise. Uh, again, and, and also the noise is generated from um, zero mean uh, probability distribution. So um, again, we generate the trajectories, training trajectories via numerical simulation uh, using the same uh, setup uh, that's, that's been used in the previous examples. Um, and then uh, we compare uh, the CINDY and neural CINDY. And here, what it shows is the, uh, the magnitude of noise that's added to the original trajectory. So uh, in case of neural CINDY, although there are some, um, some coefficients that have a small magnitude of coefficients that are not um, pruned, um, but if we look at the, those significant coefficients, then we are able to see that those significant coefficients are identified in an accurate way. Uh, as opposed to that, uh, when I look at the Cindy, then um, although the magnitude of those significant uh, dictionaries are still large and uh, it's providing somewhat accurate predictions, but um, in terms of accuracy of those uh, identification of significant coefficients, um, neural CINDY does better than CINDY. And also um, by looking at the number of um, the coefficients that are not included in the original system, we can see there are more um, those unnecessary dictionaries are included in the resulting system. 
And uh, we believe that um, the NeuroCindy works better in this particular scenario because uh, NeuroCindy is trained uh, by minimizing um, the specific loss. So um, uh, indeed, um, if we are thinking about just this data matching loss with L2 norm, then uh, it is equivalent to do the um, maximizing um, maximum likelihood estimation with uh, Gaussian prior. And if it is L2 norm, then and then it is equivalent to do the, uh, again, uh, maximizing MLE with Laplacian prior. So we believe that uh, this specific, in this specific setting, uh, because of this data matching loss, as opposed to the, uh, the derivative matching in what, what Cindy has, um, due to that, we believe that the NeuroCindy works better in this particular um, settings. So um, up until uh, this slide, uh, it's about the proposed NeuroCindy framework. And uh, after this, I'll move on to the structure preserving part. So for uh, structure preservation, we mainly focused on uh, generic, uh, which is the uh, sh short name for general equation for non-equilibrium reversible, irreversible coupling uh, formalism, which is proposed by uh, these two scholars in, back in 1997. And um, with generic, we can see that uh, some important thermodynamical laws can be conserved, which I will explain soon. So here, uh, here's the description of uh, generic. So if we have a observable uh, variable A, then the evolution of that uh, variable is described by this gradient flow. Um, and that gradient flow is um, decomposed into two parts. One is the uh, reversible part, and the other one is the irre irreversible part. And here, E is the energy of the system, and this S is the entropy of the system. So uh, again, uh, this the gradient flow can be described by using two brackets. Uh, one is the reversible bracket, and the other one is the irreversible bracket. So each of them are responsible to describing the reversible dynamics part of the system and the reversible dynamics part of the system. So um, when this bracket is given, when these two brackets are given, they are defined this way. So uh, here, um, L is a skew symmetric matrix and M has to be a symmetric semi-positive um, definite matrix. Um, and they all, this generic system also needs to follow this two degeneracy condition um, where the, uh, the partial derivatives of S, uh, by the way, this function E and S can be considered as a um, um, function of the state variable x. So this e can be considered as a function of x and s is also considered as a function of x. So um, in that setting, uh, this, these two degeneracy conditions should be met. So the partial derivatives of s with respect to x should be in the null space of L. And another condition is that um, the partial derivatives of e with respect to x should be also in the neural space of um, M. So uh, when the system is defined this way, and um, if these two degeneracy conditions uh, are satisfied, then we can see that uh, first and second laws of thermodynamics can be satisfied. So by taking A as a energy, uh, we can replace A with E and then uh, do some uh, mathematical manipulation on these two brackets. Then we can obtain that um, DEDT should be zero. So uh, as the time goes, the energy should be conserved. And if we replace A with S, and by replacing 
as here and here, and applying these uh, two, two degeneracy conditions, um, we can see that um, DSDT should be always uh, larger or equal to zero. It, it should be always uh, positive or zero, meaning that uh, entropy um, should be non-decreasing. So again, with uh, the canonical coordinates, Q, where is the position and P is the momentum and uh, S is the entropy, uh, we could get some um, general form of uh, generic form algorithm. Um, and what we would like to do is uh, we would like to learn these matrices L and M and also these function E and S from the, uh, by doing the data-driven dynamics modeling. Uh, but at the same time, we'd like to make sure that this two degeneracy condition satisfied. So um, here, there could be more uh, general settings of the generics, but uh, here we assume a specific uh, case where uh, L matrix is known, um, which is the case where um, this L matrix is this uh, has this structure, which is commonly can be seen in the systems like pendulum. So we assume that L is known and also the S is uh, observable. So that left us to learn this energy function E, and also we have to learn uh, what this irreversible dynamics part would look like. So um, for the energy, which is a function of QPS, we just made it as a um, um, neural network or the dictionary-based parameterization, where this phi is, again, some um, library vector that consisting of those dictionaries. And in order to make uh, this ir irreversible dynamics to be symmetric, uh, we use a uh, particular parameterization idea that is developed in this paper by Otion. So uh, the way that we can do is that we make this uh, four tensor as learnable, but just make sure that um, that is symmetric. So, and the way that they suggest in making these four tensor to be symmetric would be um, keeping these lambdas to be um, anti-symmetric and D to be symmetric. Um, and in our case, uh, in their case, they uh, devise the value of um, these D and lambda matrices in specific values for specific problems. But we are assuming that we don't know what these are. And we'd like to make this as a learnable parameter and learn them from the data. But with that setting, um, if we put uh, E in the place of A and B, uh, S in the place of B, then we should be able to get uh, the irreversible part of the dynamics. So once we have um, our model to be parameterized in this way, then we again apply the uh, neurons in the algorithm uh, to learn those parameters. Uh, it is very easy to uh, add this uh, parameterization into the neurons in the because these partial derivatives of the neural networks uh, can be computed by using the automatic differentiation technique. So here's the example um, benchmark problem that we have looked at. Again, uh, we made this energy. Uh, um, again, the data, data is generated by solving the numerical simulations where the system is given this way. And our goal is to recover the um, energy function um, from data and by making our um, candidate energy function to be some um, linear combination of uh, dictionaries. So. Um, here it shows the, um, the resulting, uh, the identified equations. And um, when you compare those two columns, then we can see that again, uh, up to about four significant, three significant digits, um, um, 
the proposed neural CD um, identifies a system in an accurate way. Uh, and here I'd like to just emphasize that um, although it, it's not uh, very clearly visible, but um, uh, the property that we are trying to enforce was enforced here. Five, five more minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, so here, um, the DEDT is kept to very close to zero, uh, and DSDT is also always positive. So we can see that two uh, thermodynamical laws can be enforced in here. Um, in order to make uh, more comparisons uh, about the structure preservation and without structure preservation or some softly constrained, constrained structure preservation, um, this is the result that uh, is uh, extracted from our previous paper. So uh, we have applied the same idea to um, or, or more generalized ideas of doing the structure preservation where we assume that uh, we don't even know what this L or S is. So we made all these uh, parameters to be learnable. Um, and then we apply the uh, algorithm, that algorithm to um, learning the same benchmark problem. And um, we could see that without structure preservation or um, structure is preserved in a soft way. Um, they were not doing a very good job in the extrapolation as the learned dynamical system is not very accurately capture the dynamics as opposed to that uh, with this structure preservation, which explicitly enforced the structure by design. Uh, we can see that uh, even in the very long extrapolation task, uh, it does a very good job. Um, and we applied um, another two other uh, types of structure preserving parameterization techniques to the neural framework. So uh, I'll just go over these two slides very fast. So uh, one is just the same as the uh, Hamiltonian neural networks. The, the setting is just the same as the Hamiltonian neural networks where we parameterize the Hamiltonian function with the dictionaries. And uh, here, this rows shows how accurate, how accurately neural CD approximate the system in a data-driven data way. And um, this is a, a final um, example of the structure preservation, which does structure preservation in port Hamiltonian dynamics, uh, where the um, the parameterization technique. Uh, the specific parameterization techniques that has been studied in this paper uh, by Desai. So uh, here we again parameterize the Hamiltonian, but whole system is defined this way. And here we assume what this FT is. And uh, we apply that um, I algorithm to uh, Duffing equation. And again, these are the results. Uh, we could do the uh, pretty accurate identification. So um, a neural CD has a um, many good advantages, but it also has some challenges and limitations. Uh, especially, um, these are the three challenges that we have identified so far. Um, this might be the all the uh, sparse identification type algorithm have, uh, which is the case where if if we don't include the specific dictionaries, then it might fail. Uh, uh, catastrophically. And another thing is that uh, neural CD is trained based on SGD, so it might take a uh, long time to train the model. So we might need to have the good uh, optimizer. And the third thing, third thing is that uh, initialization seems to affect a lot, but so far the most successful is the zero initialization one. So um, here's the conclusion. Uh, the paper can be found in uh, this archive website and the code will be publicly available soon. Thank you very much.